Hey y'all, Tara Mae here again, and it's Halloween, and I wanted to go over my Halloween movie list. Now this song, it does vary a little bit, but there are certain movies that I like to watch every Halloween, and I'm just going to bring up some that I also just think because they're fun this time of year. Most of them actually have Halloween in the actual movies themselves, but there's a few that don't, um, and some, like I said, that I like to hit every year, uh, and I'm going to start off with my favorite, and I just got the Blu-ray upgrade finally, that's Night of the Demons. This is the Scream Factory release of the Blu-ray. Anybody who has not seen this movie, um, I strongly suggest you do. It is a very fun movie. This has a kind of punk feel to it in the music and just in the actions and stuff like that. We have Angela, um, and she's kind of the oddball in school, you know, kind of the one that would look like she'd be into witchcraft and stuff. And we have her friend who's played by Linnea Quigley. Um, I believe Suzanne is her name in this. And a lot of you know who's, who Linnea Quigley is. She is a well-known screen queen. She's in Return of the Living Dead, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, I mean, tons, really. Creepazoids, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball, Ballorama, Nightmare Sisters. Um, I'm sure I'm sure you've seen her in something if you're a horror fan. Um, so we start off the movie kind of with this um, older gentleman getting his stuff knocked down. And we see this kind of goody-good girl who offers to help him. And he just kind of, you know, oh, go away kind of grumpy old man. He's got this bag full of apples and razor blades. <laughs> so, uh, and then we see, you know, the girl's on the phone. She's talking about dating this guy. She's supposed to go to some dance and she's putting on her costume. Her brother is kind of hiding in the closet, jumps out, scares her, stuff like that. She winds up getting roped in by her date to go to a party that Angela is hosting in uh, Hell House. And um, this was an old mortuary. So they go there and they're you know, starting the party. There's not a very big party, you know, it's, you know, less than 10 people. And they wind up conjuring demons who start possessing the people. And they look pretty damn freaky. Of course, Suzanne's the first one possessed. And uh, she gets really kind of freaky and fun. If you've seen the movie, you'll remember some notable scenes. She does this thing with lipstick. She kind of draws an outline around her face, almost like a heart. And she actually does the tube of lipstick into her nipple at one point and it's just kind of a freaky like what the hell scene but this movie is so much fun these the way the actors acted with one another the way that uh just the thing flows the way that the demons with the creepy voice and stuff there's this um pretty neat dance sequence and stuff with angela in this uh kind of see-through skirt thing in front of a fireplace and just the movie is it's a Halloween must for me. I mean, every year. And, you know, this is a Halloween party that they're going to and stuff. And it's just the way that the movie ends is even really fun. It has sort of almost a um, Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crypt type ending. And it is just one of those great 80s vibe movies. All right. So moving on, actually, um, I'm going to say that I do enjoy Demons 2. I do not have this on Blu-ray yet. Um, this one actually has Christine Taylor and Zoe Trilling in it, and Angela's back. This time, her sister ends up being roped into uh, these girls at the kind of, I guess it's a Catholic school or private school. They wind up going out to Hell House to party, and the one girl, um, she kind of wants to do like a satanic type thing for Halloween. You know, it, it's not real, but she wants to make it look real. They bring like a cat for a sacrifice and stuff, but they convince Angela's sister to come out there, and it re- releases the demons um so then they kind of wind up at the private school being you know facing these demons and there's like this nun and stuff and it's also pretty fun it is not as great as the first one i will not say that it is but there's another one i like to hit up at halloween time that is a pretty good watch there um the third one is not the greatest but it's still decent halloween themed and it does flow nicely with the second one it's of course a little cheesier um less Less well done. Angela's back again, and uh, this time it's, I believe, some robbers, yeah. It's Halloween. The gates of Hull House have creaked open once again, and Angela's waiting patiently for her treats. When a group of teens take refuge in the foreboding old funeral home to escape the law, they soon realize their grave error. So I believe um, some of them hold up a convenience store, and some other ones kind of get taken along on the ride, and they wind up in there being pursued by these demons. So it's another fun installment to that. And I love the way that the demons are. I mean, and I've said before that I'm a fan of movies with demons and stuff in them, especially in the 80s. Uh, they're sort of um, a more killer version of a zombie in a way because a scratch or a bite can turn them. Also, I suppose in these particular circumstances, dying on that property, they will come back as a demon. 
And uh, so you'll see them just, the makeup job's pretty good. They just look wicked. They take on property sometimes of their costume or just elements of the personality that have been evident and stuff like that. And it, they're usually pretty brutal, you know, got a nice element of gore and some sexuality to them and stuff like that. So I'm sure a lot of you would enjoy that. Um, my next go-to movie that I love to watch now at Halloween time ever since I've seen it, Trick or Treat. This falls into the rock exploitation category. You see Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons there on the front. They both play kind of interesting characters. Gene Simmons is a radio DJ. And Ozzy Osbourne actually is on a TV appearance kind of speaking against rock and roll, which is funny. Um, it's a kind of quotable movie. The main thing with this is the guy, he's sort of like that rock loser that they kind of portray sometimes in school. You know, it's, he doesn't dress like the popular kids. He listens to heavy metal music, you know, Lord forbid. So he kind of gets picked on, stuff like that. Um, and his idol is this rock star named Sammy Kerr. And he finds out early on that Sammy Kerr dies in a mysterious hotel fire. But it turns out that Sammy Kerr was actually trying to um, get into like a demonic power possession type thing and sort of um, completed a ritual. And he has abused himself in his last record, which this boy actually winds up with as the DJ gives it to him. Um, and he winds up unleashing Sammy Kerr, who at first seems like he's helping him overcome, you know, his bullies and stuff like that, which is great. But then the boy quickly realizes that uh, it's just a little too much, a little too evil, and he's not very happy with what's going on. So he has to kind of stop it. And we've got some fun sort of almost, you know, supernatural looking scenes. There's a chick listening to the tape that he's made from the record in a Walkman as she's sitting in the back of a car waiting for her boyfriend to come back. And it's like um, the sort of green looking effervescent stuff kind of flows over her and she starts, she's obviously uh, kind of enjoying this. It's, I guess, a really sexual scene and she winds up mostly naked in the car and stuff, but then she winds up in the hospital as she gets kind of attacked by this thing. And there's um, just some really great scenes like that. Um, of course, he's got to stop the evil or whatever and winds up his hero isn't so much of a hero after all. But it is a very fun um, kind of demon one. If you like things like Black Roses or um, Hard Rock Zombies, Rock and Roll Nightmare, um, even Deathgasm's a newer one, but it's kind of in that vein. But it's actually, it's a super fun movie. And of course, it all takes place at Halloween time, so you get people in costumes and stuff like that. Um, and I have another one. This one's Trick or Treats. And this one, um, it has David Carradine, Carrie Snodgrass, Steve Rails back in it. There's um, a girl who gets pegged to babysit for this really bratty kid. He's sort of a novice magician, and he's constantly doing these um, tricks where he appears to commit suicide in front of the babysitter multiple times and scares the crap out of her. Kind of prompts her to tell him the Peter and the Wolf story, which is kind of funny. He does no good. Um, I mean, this kid, he makes himself look like he gets guillotined, uh, cuts off his finger, all kinds of stuff. Meanwhile, she's getting calls from um, some crank. She doesn't know who it is. And it turns out, well, the boy's father has been locked up in an asylum, and he has escaped, and so he's making his way towards this place. And you do always sort of know that that's what's going on in the movie from early on. It's not like a secret or a reveal or something like that. It's not got a high body count, but it is a lot of fun, and it's definitely got a lot of Halloween spirit and stuff. And just the way the kid annoys this girl, is, it's just kind of amusing. And it's more, it's a lighter um, sort of horror, as it doesn't have a whole lot of gore doesn't have a high body count and it's not really um so much nudity um maybe a teeny bit my next one and i love this now this one come out in about 2007 trick or treat and this guy on the front sam he has sort of become the spirit of halloween and sort of a mascot for halloween these days you see him everywhere especially halloween time they have made living dead dolls out of him little statues little toys he is really super cute um he is the spirit of solon which is of course the um what Halloween kind of comes from, the uh, ancient sort of uh, thing going on there with the pagans and stuff. I haven't upgraded this to Blu-ray yet, but I really need to. As This was it. actually an ex-rental copy, but I've had this for some time. We've got werewolves, ghouls, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's sort of multiple stories, and they kind of um, intermingle throughout a town. We've got Anna Paquin and her sister and her sister's snotty friends dressed kind of like uh, fairy tale characters. Um, as you saw, Anna Pack was actually dressed like Red Riding Hood, if you can kind of see this on the back. And there's some talk of like virginity and stuff like that with her, um, and she's supposed to pick up a date for a party that they're having. Then there is um, a story with a guy who's um, maybe a teacher or something, and he's kind of giving a lesson to a kid with the 
pumpkins about checking his candy and stuff like that. We've got uh, sort of a little ghost story that goes on with some t some kids about um, kids that were killed on a bus on, on Halloween. And it shows them a really, there's some really um, nice picture scenes in this, like, like a still of it. It's got this eerie, creepy atmosphere and feeling and just it kind of, it's kind of a little bit of art at the same time. Um, a lot going on and just everything is full of Hall Halloween decorations and stuff like that. And the movie, it just, the way um, it sort of overlaps with the characters and how the characters run into each other and whatnot, it's just pretty, pretty well put together. And it is a very fun movie and it's one I highly recommend, especially either Halloween day or just before. It's a great time to watch that movie because it is just absolutely the essence of Halloween in a way. And it has nice gore and all kinds of stuff uh, going on in that movie. Another fun one that's a Halloween movie is Idle Hands. Some of you might kind of roll your eyes at that one. It is a 90s horror, and it was very kind of um, popular back in the day. Devin Sawa, Seth Green, and you got, that's Jessica Alba Young. Um, and this one guy actually, he was in The Mighty Ducks. I don't know if you remember him. But this one sort of, you know, they say idle hands are the devil's plaything or work or whatever. And sort of the Devin Sawa's character is a bit of a lazy stoner, slacker, doesn't like to do much, doesn't like to get dressed, doesn't like to get off his couch, just likes to get high. And he kind of has a crush on Jessica Alba's character. He winds up, um, there's a killer, and he finds out that his parents are dead. And then he realizes at some point his hand is possessed. And, uh... So his hand is actually committing some of these crimes. He accidentally kills his friends, and they kind of come back as zombies and hang out with him and stuff. So it's got a big sense of humor to the movie. It is not a very serious movie, but it's pretty fun. It actually has some pretty good gore scenes, and it has some pretty good um, you know, thrills, scares, stuff like that. And it has a lot of action going on and some good quotes and stuff. I have not seen this movie in years till recently. I decided to watch it this year. It's been sitting on my shelf forever. And I probably hadn't seen it since it came out on VHS when I would run it back in the video store. But it is really um, one that I would recommend watching at least one ho Halloween season. It also has the offspring in there. And they throw a lot of little goodies for the horror fan. You know, just little nods and stuff with uh, just things that they do that they know horror fans would really appreciate. So I actually found that a fun one, even though it is, um, you know, it's one of those late 90s. All right, so my next one is Hell Night. This one stars Linda Blair, came out in the 80s. Um, her male co-star, he actually was in um, one of the Friday the 13th movies. And I'm going to say it's probably the one that's got Corey Feldman in it, which is part four. So uh, it's kind of about them being hazed and stuff, and they've got to go stay overnight in this haunted house thing for their sororities and their fraternities and stuff. And there's actually, you know, of course, a backstory about a killer. This is a slasher flick, and there's people, you know, getting off. There's nudity, there's partying, there's drinking, and all that sort of fun stuff. And uh, so it's actually got a pretty good um, vibe to it for the Halloween with costumes and everything like that. Um, I haven't watched this one. I didn't watch it this season, and it's it's been about a year, you know, but it's pretty good. Uh, the killer is supposedly, you know, like a deformed monster or something that killed everybody in his house, something like that. So it's kind of one of those deals. And like I said, it's, it's really a lot of fun. And sometimes, you know, Linda Blair did some pretty good roles. I would not say this is one of her best, but it's actually, you know, it's a decent movie. It's not the easiest to find. I'm not sure if it's even on Blu-ray right now. But uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And if you like that whole costumes and party and just the feeling of Halloween and stuff, then it's one that uh, if you've got it, you know, watch it. And it may be on YouTube for those of you who wouldn't own a copy of that. Okay, so one of my non-Halloween ones that I like to hit up at the Halloween season, and I actually just watched this um, the day before yesterday. Well, no, it was yesterday. American Werewolf in London, and I did pick up the Blu-ray, the remastered Blu-ray. It only has one more special feature than the Full Moon uh, DVD edition, which I did have. But uh, this movie is pure fun. It is one of my favorite werewolf movies. It is between this and The Howling that vie for my favorite spot as far as werewolf movies go. It's just got this sort of nod to humor in it at times, you know, just some funny situations that come up. The characters play their parts perfectly. Especially the two male friends, they just bounce off each other excellently. 
the dream sequences that he goes through after he's been um, scratched by the werewolf and he's starting to, you know, he hasn't actually changed or had his first transformation, but it's coming. The moon hasn't hit yet, you know, because this does kind of abide by the full moon thing, not the every single night werewolf deal. Um, and it, it doesn't follow all the strict traditions, but it does have a big nod to the wolfman. Um, they bring up the movie constantly. There's a pub run in the beginning where there's like a, a pinnacle, or as the one guy calls it, a pentangle on there. And uh, it's on the wall, so he's wanting to ask questions about it. He keeps bringing up, you know, Lon Chaney Jr. and the Wolfman and how Bela Lugosi bites him and stuff like that. And so they do pay a pretty good homage to that. It was directed by John Landis. And um, some of the makeup effects and stuff, if you've ever seen Michael Jackson's thriller, there are some similarities to the werewolf and the zombies and stuff like that. As he is sort of haunted by his friends who are the, uh, the undead, stuck in limbo because they have died from um, unnatural causes sort of thing, um, murdered, basically their lives were taken. So he gets you know, haunted by his friend first, and then of course some of his victims after his first transformation. And, um, it's just the special effects and makeup uh, by Rick Baker, they are awesome. They are really good. The guy at the where he looks like his throat's tore out, there's a certain viciousness to some of the attacks and stuff that's just, it's you can really appreciate it. And um, it's it's fun to watch this with somebody who hadn't seen this all the way through before. I've grown up on it, so it doesn't really completely surprise me, but it actually it can be surprising to someone who hasn't seen it because it has such a intensity to some of the scenes. Especially it'll follow a sort of humorous, lighter scene and just get hit with this kind of violent thing and then it'll go kind of back into the humor a little bit. And it's not jarring, it's fitting. It just, it works and just the way they they pulled the movie off. I think it is just a really great movie, and it's hard to top that one. So I definitely like to pull that out around Halloween, but that one's good for any time of year, really. And I mean, who doesn't like werewolves? Well, I guess some people don't. <laughs> okay, another one. Um, this is actually my Blu-ray set, and I just picked this up. I had the box set of DVDs for a long time that come with the 3D glasses. They're kind of like digi packs, and they've got the um, uh, Never Sleep Again, maybe, or something like that documentary in there with it, um, like a little encyclopedia thing. I don't watch all of these every Halloween, but I do usually try to hit part one and probably part three and four, which are my favorites. Part one, of course, is, in my opinion, it's the best one. I skip over two. I don't, I don't like it as much. I don't hate it, okay, but I don't like it as much as three and four. There's things about it that I think they failed in. I don't like the idea of Freddy possessing the guy, stuff like that. And I'm sure that all of y'all know what Nightmare on Elm Street is. If you don't, I mean... I don't know how that's possible if you're a horror fan and don't know what it is. Even if you haven't seen it, you've got to know what it is, who Freddy Krueger is, what he does, um, praise on Nancy and stuff. Johnny Depp's in the first one. Heather Langenkamp is the uh, lead. She didn't do a whole lot, but she has been sort of making a comeback lately, which is nice to see. Robert England, of course, probably got the most fame for his whole career out of playing Freddy Krueger, and he just made such a perfect Freddy that it is hard, you know, they They've kind of remade it and stuff. It's hard to see anybody else in that role. He just, his attitude, the way he carried himself, you know, with the sweater, the way he just kind of did that with the fingers and stuff. Just everything about the way he portrayed that character. I, I guess, I mean, he, it was like the part was written for him. So it's really kind of fun. Um, and I always like to bring that one out. It's one of the kind of classics, you know. Uh, a lot of people like to watch those. Um, and, of course, you know, I can't say that without saying, of course, Halloween. And I've picked up this set on eBay. It's the complete set. And my favorites are probably one and three. I do like four and five a lot. Um, I like two. You know, don't get me wrong. But uh, my favorites for some reason seem to be one and three. Three really doesn't have Michael Myers in it. It doesn't have a lot to do with um, moving that part of the story along. It's more about a, a mask factory and these masks. These people are up to no good. There's a little emblem that they're putting, Silver Shamrock. You know, it's got that um, three more days to Halloween. <laughs> and it's got the little uh, skeleton-looking thing, pumpkin, and the witch masks that they're trying to sell. So it's actually, um, some people say it's, they tried to move, well, the Halloween movies were going to be different every time. They weren't all going to be about Michael Myers. But that one initially didn't do very well. So they went back to what they knew was working. They went back to Michael Myers in four and five, and they um, then moved the story along with that. Uh, in number two, of course, we find out that Lori was his sister, which in part one they never actually said. Part one, which was originally, I believe, supposed to be called The Babysitter Murders by John Carpenter, um, it starts out with a little boy murdering his older sister. 
Michael Myers. I mean, everybody should know this story by now. And, of course, um, he pursues the babysitters. It isn't until part two, like I said, that you find out that Laurie was actually his uh, his little baby sister, that, and he's coming back to kill her. So what part four and five does is they introduce the fact that she's had a child. And so he's then pursuing, you know, more of his family line. And, again, it's another girl. Um, they do... He does seem to be going after girls predominantly. They don't really do much of a male child, you know, or male sibling kind of thing. So, uh, not really till age 20, which I'm not, I'm not, I don't like age 20. I'll be honest with you. I really didn't like it because they kind of, what they decided to do was, okay, those other sequels didn't happen after two. We didn't like them. We're going to change the story. We're going to say she faked her death and she decided to have a son, which why she would leave her her daughter in jeopardy and fake just her own life, you know, so they kind of ignore the other sequels in my opinion, because otherwise if you recognize that the other ones happened, then it's kind of cruel to the daughter, don't you think, with Danielle Harris played, and she comes back in the remakes, Rob Zombie did, um, which is also in that set, I have not watched them in a little while, did not like Halloween 2, the newer one at all, I just could not get into that, I thought there was moments about it that were absolutely ridiculous. The first one, I just think they spent too much time trying to give him, like, this big messed up story. You know, he had a fucked up childhood, and so he turned into this. I don't think they really needed it. I think even John Carpenter kind of said that. They didn't need that. They He just killed. You didn't have to know why he just killed. He stalked people, and he killed them. And uh, overall, you know, of course, about Halloween, it's the epitome of Halloween. Everybody, that movie is synonymous with the holiday. That's one of the things you see everywhere. I mean, I've got the shirt for part two on today. I mean, I'm sure y'all can see Michael Myers on it. And um, it's definitely a fun series and definitely one I try to hit every Halloween season. But, again, sometimes I watch those out of the Halloween season, too, just because they're good movies. Um, another one, and this one's going to be actually, this is a newer movie. This one's called Hellions, and it's kind of an independent thing. Um, and I got this one from Screen Factory. It's the IFC. I watched this initially on Netflix, I believe. And it's, uh, it's got Robert Patrick in it. Most of you know him as the guy in Terminator 2. It's kind of like the bad guy, you know. And uh, this Chloe Rose, it's Halloween, and she's got these kind of strange kids showing up at her house. Something's happened to her boyfriend. And there's this whole um, story that kind of starts coming into play about these creepy kids actually aren't what they seem. And so they are uh, kind of after her in a way, and she's kind of holed up in her house trying to avoid being taken by them, and it's just got this kind of creepy vibe to it, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, probably, as far as newer movies go, it's it's one that I would definitely recommend, just because a lot of times these newer ones are hit or miss, you know, but they've done this one really well. It captures the Halloween spirit, and it really hasn't been done, like just the, the kind of things that they did. Elements of it, maybe, but not, not the way they put the whole thing together, and uh, that's another one I would recommend for the Halloween season. And the last one I am going to recommend on this video, I like to hit some of the Omen movies. I like to hit the first one, and I like to hit the second one, just because, um, well, I love that sort of thing. You know, demons, son of Satan, I don't know. <laughs> it's just kind of thing I'm into. And, of course, most of you probably know what the Omen is, and I'm talking about the original, not the remake. Of course, the uh, woman, her, her child actually dies you know, in childbirth, and her husband makes the decision to get another child whose mother has died in childbirth, and just kind of substitute it and not tell his wife that he's done this. But it turns out that, you know, it's sort of the son of Satan, and he's coming into his power. And you've got, of course, the uh, really famous scene of the nanny or babysitter, whatever she is, saying, Damien, it's all for you, and hanging herself at a party full of kids at one of his birthday parties. And then the father learning that his uh, this boy that he's taken into his home is actually evil and happened to decide, you know, do I kill a child? And uh, so, of course, in part two, uh, Damien's a little older, obviously makes it through the first movie, spoiler alert. <laughs> so uh, he's now being raised by some um, family members of the Thorns who had him in the first one, and he's got, like, a nephew now and stuff, and they've kind of upped some of the deaths and stuff like that in it. Both of those have this great atmosphere, vibe, creepiness to them. Um, they have some interesting death scenes here and there. Um, there's a photographer that his picture sort of seemed to predict in the first one what might happen to somebody by um, a sort of distortion in the photo that he takes and stuff like that. And then you see it carried out. There's a lot of very famous scenes in that. It's a very classic um, couple of movies there, and I would recommend them. 
any time of year, but they're really fun to hit at Halloween just because, you know, you're thinking of ghosties and ghoulies and Satan and stuff anyway, so why not? So those are the ones that I'm going to say were my picks this year for the most part, um, or the ones that I would recommend once with Halloween. You know, some you might not have known some of those movies or might not have checked them out before. So I hope you check the ones out that you haven't seen, and I hope you like the ones that I picked. And uh, you can always comment, um, like, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter, TaraMa79, T-A-R-A-M-A-7-9, if you'd like. And you can ask me questions there. And uh, let me know what you think. Tell me what your picks were for Halloween this year, what kind of movies you like to hit. Um, I did actually hit Evil Dead this year, Evil Dead 1 and 2, um, and a few others. But uh, I try to streamline this just a little bit and not get too out there. You know, I mostly hit the ones that I know are Halloween themed and stuff. So... Until next time, y'all, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, and hopefully I'll see you next Halloween. Thank you.